Hello, good day to you all. I welcome you all to this beautiful class. In this class, we are going to be learning how to design our fascinator base. But before then, I'll be showing you how to mold your fascinator base. This is the mold I'll be using. It is called the pop mold. I'm using my thumb pin, a wording. This is a very soft wording. My lining, this is the lining I'll be using. This is the main fabric I'll be using for my fascinator base. A bowl of water, my stiffener, my UHE gum, my art wire, and also a crinoline. As we proceed further in the teaching, I'll be showing you the kind of crinoline I'll be using. Thank you. So the first thing we are going to do is to take the measurement of our mold. Because the measurement of our mold determines the cutout of our fabric. So this is the measurement of my mold. Make sure you push in one inch inside like this. Then you push in one inch inside like this. So all together I have nine and a half. Next say approximately 10. So when I'm going to cut my fabric, I'm going to be used to cover my mold. That is, I'm going to cut it 10 inches in length and 10 inches by the width. We'll also be needing our Vaseline and our nylon. You can use any type of Vaseline. You can also use oil cream or um, anointing oil. So we proceed now. You pick up your mold. This is the type of mold I'm using. You put it inside your nylon and you tie it up. Then you pick up your Vaseline. You use your Vaseline to rub the nylon. The reason why we are doing it is that so that when you mold it finished, it will be easy for you to remove your wording on it. And that, that's the reason why we are using our Vaseline. So once you are done with that, you set it aside. So this is my stiffener. It has been mixed with water. It must not be too thick or too watery. You can see it. it must not be too thick or too watery. So the next thing you do is you pick up your lining. I am using a dull face satin. That is what I'm using. You pick up your lining. You insert it inside the you insert it inside your stiffener. You let it soak very well. Then you bring it out. Just excuse a little. And place it on your mold like this. Same thing is applicable to your wording. I'm using a soft wording, so the wording is cut into two. I use um, 10 inches in width and 10 inches in length. The measurement of our mold is what gave us this uh, measurement. So everything I'm using is 10 inches in length and 10 inches in width. I'll do the same thing. I'll soak it inside my stiffener. So this is my wording. I've placed my lining. The next thing is to pick your wording. You place it on it like this. Then you pick up the second wording. Insert it inside your stiffener. This is it, then you flip it to the other side. So the next thing is we start using our thumping to hold the material together with the mold. So you start from the four cardinal point line, from the north, south, east, and west. So that's what we'll be doing now.
So once you are done with that, you start bringing it. You make sure it's firm. You start, you start bringing it together and use your thumb pin to tack it. You bring everything together. Use your thumb pin to that. So you make sure that there is no skews at this part. Everything is firm. So that is what I'll be doing now. And once I'm done, I will show you the end result. So this is the outcome. Can you see the front? Can you see how firm it is? So next thing, I'll be putting it under the sun. For you to dry it takes uh, it depends on the intensity of the sun sometimes it takes a day or two days to dry off so i'm going to put it under the sun and let it dry off so after that when the mold is dried i'll be using this to cover it up i can't use just this one to cover it because it should be showing the wording i use so i have to use my lining to turn it over that is, this is the right side of my lining. I will also put the right side of my fabric. Place it on each other like this. I will align it together. Then I run a stitch on it, on my sewing machine. Run a stitch, run a stitch. I leave a little space to turn it out. So when, when I turn it out and the mold is dry, then I will use it to cover the mold. So that is what we'll be doing next. Thank you. So the mold is dried already and I've gone ahead to remove my paints. So the next thing is to, for my fabric, I've turned it inside out. Can you see? So I use this satin to make the lining. So I'm covering it up with my mold. Don't forget, this is how we are doing it. One, two, three, four. By applying our UH gum. So we are covering it up before removing the mold. So that is going to take the, sh the shape. And when you are drawing your fabric, make sure it's firm till it's thick to the to the mold. You hold it down and make sure it's thick. So once it's thick to the mold, then we can now remove our mold, and that is what we'll be doing now. So this is it. After using my fabric to cover the mold up, this is it. So the next thing we'll be doing, is, it has stick to it already. So the next thing we'll be doing is we are going to remove the wooden mold from it. So you gently open it up like this. Like this. You keep opening it wild like this. As you're opening it, you are pushing the mold the wooden mode up you just be careful while doing it so that you will not destroy the shape of the mold and this is it so what we are going to do now is these are excesses, so you are going to trim off the excess, and that is what we'll be doing right now. After trimming off the excess, this is what I have. 
and the next thing is to pick up our mood wooden mold this is the mold i use for this particular base then i'll measure it round with my tape so what i have is 20 inches for the round measurement and i'll take my art wire and cut out 22 inches i'm adding extra two inches to it 22 inches and this is what i used to cut out my art wire this is a cutter it's used for cutting the art wire then i place it together like this and use my and use my thread I use my thread to hold it down. You can as well use your paper tape to hold it down, depending on what you want. So I'm using my thread to hold it down like this. So after holding it down, we'll be inserting it inside our fascinator base. After securing it with your tray, it is time to it is time to fix it inside your fascinator base. So this is how we we'll put it inside. So, and we'll go ahead to close up the excess with our um, trimmings or our bias. We apply our UHU gum on it, then you close it up like this. You close up the rough edges either with your trimmings or your bias and i'll go ahead and do it and once i'm done with that i'll be right back i've gone ahead to finish it up with my trimmings and you can see how neat the edges is so the next thing is to design the fascinator base 